Hey, Hans here. So I'll try to explain vector databases and why we actually don't use them. Um, we could, but we don't. Um, so yeah, let me just explain. A GPT, GPT model like this one, it has a context window. Let us just draw that here. So all this here is all the information, all the text that we can put into this model. And with the newest uh, 4.0, this is 125,000, I don't know, it's big. It can contain like almost a book inside one of these. What a vector database is, is let me go here, vector database, like so. Um, it takes like a very long, it can take multiple documents, it can take anything text related, and then it breaks down um, this, where am I? There I am. This large document here, like so, large document, and it breaks this down into, let me see here, so it divide, it splits up the document into chunks. Um, depending on the model, um, I think OpenAI, they have a different kinds of models. You can also chunk differently. Anyways, it takes a lot of data and then it chunks it up into smaller chunks. Then it vectorizes each chunk, which means that it gives a representation of what's inside the chunk or it has multiple vectors per chunk, but it vectorizes the uh, content within it. What this does is that every time, so this now, instead of being a chunk of text or string, it is now represented by three numbers, which is a vector, which is why it's called a vector database. Um, so this chunk here, it might have, I don't know, 150 vectors something like that. Then when you queue, then uh, this database here is used for queuing. So you can retrieve data, you can retrieve chunks from this database into the GPT model. Then when we search, for example, this GPT um, query or model we have set up, we've set up that we want to queue the database based on a search parameter or something else. It can go ahead and retrieve data within the database. And um, this data query that it's going to search, the vector for that might look like this. So it's very similar. Maybe the, um, the vector here, whoops down here it looks like this and this one looks like this and so forth so it will go ahead and vectorize the search parameter and then it will go ahead and see which of these chunks is the most related chunk then it will take that chunk and feed it back into here because our context window was not big enough, we could only go down to this portion here. So we couldn't feed the whole document into this GPT model. Instead, we had to, then we can then chunk it up, use a vector database, chunk it up, and then only retrieve the data that might be the correct data. Like we actually don't know if this chunk here contains the specific data. It might actually be this one down here. And the vector might look like this down here, it should be red, this vector. Um, so the information that we, the most relevant information might actually be in a different chunk, but how, like this is how a vector database is set up. You queue or you search within the vector database, then you get these chunks back based on the search parameter and how the database was vectorized.
And that's why it's called a vector database. And that's like, you could, you can imagine you can cram like a billion books in a vector database, maybe not a billion, you can put a thousand books into a vector database and use that in your GBT node and search that database and retrieve data. And then hopefully you get relevant data back. Uh, if we go over to these ones that you sent the link here, um, I think they had something about new, no, that wasn't it. Let me just go here, this one. Let's open this. Um, they had something about retrieval rate. Um, you can see here that they are referencing these numbers here, percentages. The performance on uh, MTB, I'm very confident that these numbers 62, 64, etc., is an accuracy retrieval percentage, which means that how precisely can we retrieve the exact information or the, not the exact, because if you like search for the exact information, the exact words, you'll get the correct chunk. But if you search for semantically correlated uh, things <laughs> that a human would pick, okay, uh, we're searching for uh, protein powder. Um, and the only thing we got is bulking in the vector database, then that must be the correct chunk. The AI or the vectorized database might not have, might not retrieve or uh, give you back that correct information. Anyways, uh, that is how vectorized storage work. So you chunk up all the information, you can cram a lot of information in, um, and then you can retrieve information back from it based on a search parameter. This was very nice when we had smaller GPT models where we couldn't put all that information in. Now we have so large context windows that these embeddings are not, well, vector databases are not that relevant. And also I developed this whole script while uh, we had the smaller models, which is why we, uh, we are actually condensing information before we save it. So let's go to our um, get SEO part here. So we actually retrieve all the information we need. We select, like we do um, competitor selection and we extract all the information from the site. So we like we scrape five full sites of information, but instead of just feeding five full sites into the writer later on, we go ahead and use a summarize node. So instead of uh, using a vectorized database, we take this whole document here that is too long for our context window. We can't put everything in. Instead of chunking it up and hoping, like this is the problem with the vector database is that you're hoping that you get the correct information out of it. Instead of hoping, uh, we get the correct information, we summarize it. So we go ahead and we reduce all this information to, ah, that wasn't the best color. Let's go this one better. So we summarize it and condense the information into a summarized block, a condensed uh, block of information that we know is information heavy, we remove all the fluff, fluff, we only get the details. And now we can add this guy here, instead of relying on the whole document or relying on um, vectorization or chunks. So that is why we don't use embeddings or vector databases because we summarize information, condense information and only use uh, what is needed. Plus the context windows are now so freaking large that um, we can add a lot of information. Um, so the only place where vector databases are uh, a good thing in my opinion is for chatbots where you need to chat uh, with a 
data set that is very, very, very large. So like think a thousand books or all the documentation on JavaScript, for example. Then you can retrieve information from that large data set uh, through a vector database. But for us or when creating content, it's not that useful because we do it in a different way that in my opinion works better because I have worked with this um, and it is hit and miss. You won't get the correct information always. Plus you will have to create a vector database every time you write a new article, um, which is also not very good in my opinion, because it's a lot of wasted resources. Um, you actually have to go in and create these um, storage units here, which is uh, untitled vector storage. You can see in this one, I have some files in here which are vectorized. Um, so yeah, I hope this makes sense. Um, but yeah, that's why we don't use embeddings. Um, and if, like you said, someone said that <clears throat> embeddings gives better results, only if it retrieves the correct information. And instead of relying on luck or a vector database to retrieve the correct information, I find it much better to just summarize or plainly just give it the correct information that I want it to have. Which is why the scripts looks like this, where we summarize and summarize YouTube information. Um, so we condense information instead of chunking it up. So yeah, hope that answers your question.